and the Schwann cells. If this is a peripheral neuron, like a motor neuron perhaps, then the myelin will be made of Schwann cells. So here's a Schwann cell, here's a Schwann cell, and here's a Schwann cell. And the Schwann cells, if I do the axon as a little circle, I'm taking a cross section right through this Schwann cell. The Schwann cell will have something like a cell body, a place where there's a, a bulged region, where the nucleus is, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the other parts that a cell needs to live. And then the rest of the cell literally is wrapped, it's wrapped its membrane around the axon several times. And what that does is it insulates the axon. Remember all these negative positive charges we're talking about? This part of the axon where the Schwann cell is wrapped around is now insulated so it doesn't undergo those charge changes really. I'm going to put my charges back up here. Positive on the outside, negative on the inside, positive on the outside, negative on the inside, positive on the outside, negative on the inside. Now with a myelinated axon, the trigger zone, the local potentials, the graded potentials in the cell body and the dendrites, if they become positive enough again to reach threshold of minus 55, then again this area of the membrane will be triggered to become more positive on the inside and negative on the outside. Here's what's neat about myelination. Remember how I went through with an unmyelinated axon and I had to erase every little plus and negative sign and do it step by step? Each piece of the membrane had to go through that charge change. What happens here is this positive charge because of the insulation of the myelin, it can literally just shoot right through the myelinated section and go to this area here and stimulate the charge change here. And behind again, once, once again, we have to repolarize. This area, again, can just jump to this next area and stimulate it because, again, the myelin allows the cell to do that without having to do every little bit of membrane. And we become repolarized behind it. This area stimulates the next area, positive on the inside now, negative on the outside, and we repolarize behind us. And finally, we stimulate the axonal buton. Now, if you notice, and you might even go back to the, um, to the earlier time when I did it without the myelin, the myelinated axon, I was able to draw it a lot faster. It's true for me, and it's also true for the neuron. The action potential, screaming down an axon, moves much faster if there's myelination. And this is why. Because the charge changes that the membrane has to undergo, it doesn't have to happen at every square micrometer of the axon. It just has to happen in these areas. So it can jump from one area to the next. These areas are called nodes. of Ranvier. If you go back to the original pronunciation, it's Ronvier, if anybody cares. Um, kind of cool, nodes of Ronvier. Um, understand that the reason that myelin allows an action potential to travel faster is because that action potential jumps from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier. So it can just go a lot faster. It doesn't have to touch every bit of the membrane. That jumping from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier, Ranvier has a name. It's called saltatory conduction. Jumping from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier, saltatory conduction. So in the next step, we're going to look at what's happening at this tiny little area of the membrane to cause the charge changes that are occurring. We're going to look at the proteins on the membrane. 
that deal with resting potential, maintaining this minus 70 millivolts. And we're also going to look at the channels that cause this huge depolarization and then repolarization of the membrane of action potential.